you. Um, but hopefully you can hear us and we will be, I'll be introducing some people in just a moment. But this meeting is being recorded so that if you have some friends who weren't able to join us this evening or if there's another parent who can't watch right now but wants to watch later, um, it will be recorded and put on our website for you to see at a later time. And somebody did ask the question, if I have an eighth grader, will I need to watch this presentation again? Yes, you do. No, I'm kidding. You do not. We will be, it's the same content for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And the only thing that's different is we are going to have the um, grade level team leader and the assistant principal um, going over the information, but the information is exactly the same. You will be able to ask questions in the um, Q&A. And at the very end of the presentation, if we do have time, and we did have time in our sixth grade presentation to answer a few questions at the end, we will um, answer those questions. Any questions that we don't have an opportunity to answer, we will um, add those to our FAQ page that we will have on our website. Um, and those questions will be answered there. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Dr. Eflin and I'm the principal here at Hernandez Middle School. And welcome back um, to our Bulldogs and welcome if you are new this year uh, to Hernandez. Um, I, 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 did, I failed to mention this in the first uh, meeting we had this evening, but um, I do have uh, two daughters, Samantha and Paige, and for the first time in 22 years, my husband and I are empty nesters. So my youngest daughter, we dropped her off actually this morning. We moved her in to her dorm room, and my oldest daughter, who's 22, is a senior um, in college. So uh, for the first time, like I said, in 22 years, my husband and I have no children at home. So today is the first of many things. Um, so, uh, like I said, I have two daughters. I have a husband, uh, James. We've been married for 26 years. Um, and this is my second full year to be the principal at Hernandez Middle School, my 13th year in the Stony Point Learning Community and my 25th year in education. And that just really makes me sound really old. So um, I don't wanna say that again, but um, I am so excited that this is the start of the 2020-2021 school year. And while things are different, um, a lot of things are the same. We are still excited about having your students this year. We are still committed to doing the best job possible and we still care about your kiddos and their education. So like I said, while things have, are different, many, many things are the same. Um, we do have some guiding principles that have guided our decisions, the district's decisions, campus decisions this school year, and those guiding principles are prioritizing student and staff safety, focusing on equity, centralizing communication, and remaining flexible. Um, you may have seen and you really are going to be bombarded with communication um, these next few days and these next few weeks. And if you do need any questions answered, please, please, please um, call, email. We are here to help and support. We don't want this to, while this can be a frustrating time, we don't want you to feel frustrated. Um, it is different. I am going to say, and I'm going to be right up front about it, we are going to make mistakes um, as teachers, as administrators. We are going to make some mistakes. We are going to make some stumbles, hopefully not too many and hopefully not very often, but there are going to be mistakes made. There are going to be stumbles that are taken. This is new for everyone. It's new for your students. It's new for our teachers. It's new for administrators. Um, we are reimagining education. This has never been done in my 25 years um, as an educator. And so there are going to be some things that, um, that occur that we certainly couldn't plan for, but we are going to do everything in our power to ensure 
that we are making the best possible decisions um, for your students. And like I said, please reach out any time that you have any questions or concerns, that's what we're here for. Um, Mr. Smazna, next slide. And like I said, I am Patricia Eflin. I am your principal here at Hernandez Middle School, but I have a great administrative team. Mr. Teal, our sixth grade assistant principal. I also have Ms. Larissa Ortiz, your seventh grade assistant principal. And then new to our team this year, we have uh, Ms. Kel Catterton, and she is our new eighth grade assistant principal. We also have two fabulous counselors. Uh, we have Mr. Richard Swords, and he serves last name alphabets A through L. And we also have Ms. Brenda Cohen, a counselor who serves last name alphabets M through Z. And she is also our Spanish speaking counselor. So if you have any needs um, in Spanish, she will be able to help you there. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Swords and he is going to talk about our counseling department. Uh, good evening. Um, I, would I would ask how everybody's uh, summer went, but I can imagine like mine, not much happened. Um, so the counseling department, we're going, we're going to, this is a new um, um, year and this is going to be new for us because it's, we're going to do a lot of things via internet that we haven't done before. So again, it's a learning uh, a curve that we have to, um, you know, overcome and, and, and fix if, if need be. So anything you need from us, you can contact us through, uh, by visiting our website. And by doing that, you'll see our phone numbers, our email addresses and our um, Google voice, which is like, um, you can call us and we'll answer it uh, via um, computer and you can do it, you know, after hours if it's important. Um, students, um, if they need to contact us, they'll use the, um, a Google document that they know uh, that we used last year. So all they have to do is go on to the counseling website, uh, click on a uh, counseling uh, form to see the counselor and they fill it out and then they'll come to us and then we'll contact them in regards to whatever the situation is. Um, this year, we're going to be doing uh, some different things in, reg in regards to counseling with kids. Um, for one, one thing, if we're going to do a Google Meet with the kids, we're going to need the parents just for that to sign a waiver saying that it's okay for you to talk to our, our children, our students. Um, and what you can do, you can find that on our website too. Just download it, um, fill it out, and then email it back to us so we can keep it on file. Uh, if not, we're not going to be able to, we need your permission to, to uh, contact your kids and for them to contact us just for uh, Google Meet. Uh, emails, we can answer those, it's not a problem. Um, we will be doing individual counseling for the first uh, semester uh, in regards to uh, via internet, small groups. And at the small groups, are going to be basically just social type gatherings, uh, check-ins, make sure if they have any questions academically, uh, anything along those lines. Um, classroom guidance lessons, we're gonna be doing every Friday. Uh, so this, uh, the first Friday we'll be doing things like a, um, a need assessment we'll give out to the kids. Um, they'll check off things that they, they're worrying or things that they need uh, help with. So we'll, we'll take that, all that information in. Uh, we'll also do like an introduction, like we'll just kind of, especially with the sixth grade, I know with the seventh grade, but with sixth grade, we're going to have to spend a little bit more time. Just seventh and eighth graders know us already from, you know, for the past year or two years. Um, if you need resources outside of um, school, we, are, we, we, we can help you or set you up in regards to that. Also visit our website because there's a link where you click on and it'll give you like a, 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 a slew of um, agencies out in the community. Um, we're going to be, we're going to continue uh, mentoring with kids via internet. Um, parent meetings, again, email to uh, schedule appointments. Just kind of give us a heads up and we'll, we'll fit you in uh, accordingly. Uh, five or four meetings, again, uh, via email, we'll send you out um, an email uh, schedule and then, you know, we'll just pick the time. And tag testing, I know I'm probably have to do that in person, but again, a lot of that stuff's going to be on our website and that's going to be in November. You'll get, um, if you want to nominate your student, 
to be tested for TAG, just fill out the uh, paperwork and you email to us. Uh, like I said, if you need anything from us, feel free to uh, call us, email us, uh, Google Voice, uh, whatever you need, just let us know and we'll definitely help you out. And um, with any, any further ado, I'm gonna let Ms. Or uh, Ortiz take it from, from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Swords. Um, just wanna say good evening to everybody. Uh, we are really excited to get this school year started. I know it's very different. As Dr. Eflin mentioned, it's different for everybody and it's new for everyone, but please know that we are here to help in any way that we can. We're gonna be sharing a lot of information um, and a lot of information is gonna be coming to you uh, via email or through the school website or the district website. But if maybe something's not, un, you know, we're not clear with something, you still have some confusion, uh, please know you can reach out to us and we'll do our very best to make sure that you're taken care of and that we can help you out. Um, so with that, I forgot to mention, I am in my second year at um, Hernandez Middle School. I actually, this is my, I'm entering my 17th year in education. Um, this is my fifth year as an administrator and my second year here at Hernandez, and I'm very excited um, to be moving up with um, this class of students. So um, I'm sure you're eager to uh, want to know who teachers are on the seventh grade team. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Santos, and she is going to introduce the teachers. Hi, good evening, parents. Um, my name is Ms. Santos. This is my sixth year teaching. Uh, my third year at Hernandez, and I am so, so honored to be the seventh grade lead teacher this year. Um, and so I want to start by introducing our, our seventh grade team. Um, so the math teachers for this year are myself, uh, Ms. Kristen Lucas, Mr. Darren Strong, and we also have Ms. Ema Richburg and Tamitha Seibel, and they will be uh, teaching the seventh Excel classes. Um, our world culture teachers are Mr. David Cooper and Mr. Edwin Lampy. Our ELA teachers are Ms. Amanda Painter, Ms. Natori Blue, Ms. Kimberly Fogel, and Ms. Karen Stringer. And our science teachers are Ms. Jean Saray and Ms. Julie Salone. Um, I cannot stress enough how amazing the seventh grade group of teachers are. We have been working so hard uh, to make sure that we are ready for your students for the first day of school. Um, and so in talking about the first day of school, we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the schedule and what it will look like this year. So our virtual class schedule for this year, we are going to have A days and B days. So A days are gold days, B days are blue days, and we will be rotating back and forth from A day to B day. Um, there will be a calendar made, um, and that will be shared with you that, that says which days are A days and which days are B days, so you don't have to worry about, about that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through what that's gonna look like. Uh, so on Thursday, which would be the first day of school, your uh, students would log on at 8.20 to their advisory class. And so from 8.20 to 8.50, they're going to have advisory. Um, that's going to be every day. Um, and for those 30 minutes, every day they will be doing something different. So on Mondays, they will be checking in with their teachers. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they will have an IB lesson prepared by the IB coordinator, Ms. Hyatt Garner. Um, on Wednesday, they will have social emotional learning lessons that are prepared by the district. And on Fridays, they will have counselor uh, counseling lessons that are prepared by the counselors. So that's what the advisory will look like. Um, their advisory class is going to be their first period teacher. And again, they will be logging on at 820 with their first period teacher and doing the designated lesson for that day. Um, so after their um, advisory class on a day, which is Thursday, they will um, log on to their first period class at 850. And so their first period class is from 850 to 1010. Um, and if you notice, it's divided into synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. And I, I want to explain what that is. So from 850 to 920, first period, they will be doing synchronous learning. And what synchronous learning is, is that they're going to be live with their teacher, their first period teacher for those first 30 minutes. So they will be doing a live lesson with their teacher from 850 to 920. And this is first period. And so after 920, from 920 to 1010, they will have asynchronous learning and asynchronous learning 
um, will be maybe small group, they'll have time to do independent practice and what the first period teacher has assigned uh, for that day. So that is a difference. Again, synchronous learning is when they are live with their teacher. Asynchronous is when they're doing either small group or practice assignments, um, any assignments that are being assigned by their teacher. Um, so again, first period is from 8.50 to 10.10. Um, at 1020, they will log on with their second period teacher. And if you notice, it's going to repeat. So the first 30 minutes again from 1020 to 1050 will be synchronous learning live with their second period teacher. And then from 1050 to 1140, they will do asynchronous learning, which will be practice assignments, small groups, and anything that's assigned by their second period teacher for that day. Um, their lunch is from 11.50 to 12.35. After they have their lunch, they're gonna log on to their third period class. Their third period class is from 12.45 to 2.05, and it's broken up the same way, synchronous and asynchronous. The first 30 minutes are synchronous, and then they'll have that asynchronous time. Uh, fourth period is from 10, um, I'm sorry, 2.15 to 3.35. Um, and again, the first 30 minutes will be that, eight, um, that synchronous time live with their teacher, fourth period teacher. And then the last um, from 2.45 to 3.35 will be asynchronous time. Um, and they'll have a chance to do any practice assignments or assignments that their teacher assigns. So that is Thursday, that is a day. Notice that they are only going through the first four classes on Thursday. So on B day, which is Friday, when they log in, they're going to log in at 820 with their advisory teacher, which is their first period teacher, and they're going to do their 30 minute lesson for that day. Once advisory is done, now on B day, they're going to log on to their fifth period teacher next. So fifth period will be from 850 to 1010. 8.50 to 9.20 will be that live synchronous learning time. Then they'll go to their sixth period and log on to their sixth period class from 10.20 to 11.40. 10.20 to 10.50 will be that live synchronous time with their teacher. Their lunch is again from 11.50 to 12.35. Uh, seventh period will be at 12.45. It will be from 12.45 to 2.05. Uh, with those first 30 minutes being synchronous and then their eighth period class will be from 215 to 335 from 215 to 245 will be their synchronous learning so a days will be first to fourth period b days will be fifth to eighth period and again synchronous learning is live with their teacher and asynchronous learning is practice assignments, small groups, any assignments that their teacher assigns, but not necessarily live teaching. Um, so that is the schedule. Again, I am so excited to be the seventh grade lead teacher this year. Um, I know it's gonna be a crazy year, but we're gonna get through it together. And I look forward to seeing your students on Thursday. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Ortiz. All right, uh, Mr. Smazna, can you um, switch slides for us? There we are. Um, I know some of you have reached out asking about school supplies, um, and this is located on our website. So if you don't snap a picture of this or you forget something, just know that it is located on our website. Um, but we do ask, because we are, our students are participating in a virtual model, um, it will be important that they have headphones or earbuds of some sort that does have a microphone so that they can communicate with their teachers. Um, we also ask that they have pencils, um, a pencil pouch, and a pencil sharpener. Of course, they're going to need pencils when they're working at home to take notes and maybe um, work some math problems, different things they might need to actually sketch out on paper. Um, and the pencil sharpener comes into play once we return to campus. Students won't be using the shared uh, pencil sharpener. They will need to have one on their own that they can use to sharpen their pencils. Um, we also ask that um, students have highlighters or colored pencils, um, a one to two inch binder and a notebook and notebook paper, sorry about that, 
or they can opt for a five subject spiral for note taking and scratch paper. So that's just all about preference. They will need some place to take notes and keep notes. Some students prefer to have that notebook with um, loose leaf paper and some prefer to have it in that, have that in a binder or some prefer a notebook. So it's, it's just the student preference in that case. Um, if your child is going to be attending school when they give us the green light to go ahead and do that, um, then we do encourage that students bring a water bottle. Um, and we do have the water bottle filling station, so uh, students can use those, but we do ask that we encourage students to bring a water bottle from home. Um, and we also ask that if your child is enrolled in art class, um, they will need um, colored pencils and markers. So again, if, if your child is taking art this year, those are the two additional items that they will need. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next thing. Um, you know, a lot of the questions that you're going to have um, this year are going to be centered around technology. And so we're going to try our best to give you as much information as possible. Just know that some of that information isn't quite out yet. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. Um, I will say this. Um, our school website is going to be very important um, for you to access. And I say that because um, we have our Hernandez happenings that go out every Monday. Um, Dr. Eflin writes the newsletter. It is uh, currently going out every Monday. We might have some more frequent communication um, within the next coming week. Um, just gearing up for that first day of school. Um, but you can see there um, any of the Hernandez happenings. If you are not receiving those emails from us, um, you know, you can update your email address with our registrar. And so if you're not receiving those, you can always click here. And I'm looking at um, on the right hand side, the second arrow that's there um, for any of the newsletters. So if you need to go back and read any of those, you can do that. Um, the other thing is to the left of that, we have the guy with the uh, blue shirt. And so you can use this, and this is where you're going to see technology updates in just a little bit. We're gonna to switch to the next slide. I'm gonna break some things down for you in regard to what's coming out. But one important thing is many of our uh, families have already, if they don't have a device at home, um, they have signed up to receive or to receive a, a district device um, and or a hotspot to have internet access. If um, you are in need of one and you have not, ha you know, asked for that, we can provide that. Um, this is where you're going to click and it'll take you to um, the Google form that allows you to make that request. Um, we did have device pickup today, but Mr. Smazma has added uh, two additional time slots tomorrow. So I encourage you, if you have not um, put in that request, I encourage you to take care of that tonight. And if for some reason it doesn't happen tonight, uh, we will do whatever we need to do to make sure that your student is ready to go for the first day. Um, so let's go to the next slide. When you click on the um, guy with the blue shirt, um, it will take you to this breakdown of things that are gonna be coming out. So updates for you. So today, the 17th, um, we are in the webinar that we are currently in. That's the information that was shared. Um, and you can still request a device. Um, tomorrow, what you can expect tomorrow is that your child, you should be able to get into hack um, and know what your child's schedule is. Um, and again, we are still able to get you a device and that goes on all through uh, the rest of the week. Um, but there, there is going to be information about class link and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a bit, um, as well as Schoology information. So all of those things will be available leading up to the first day of school. All right, um, let's go ahead and, so speaking of the first day of school, I think everyone is wondering, you know, how do I log in? What do I do if I have problems? And those are all very real and valid questions. Um, and I do want to be very clear, we're trying to provide as much information as we can, but tomorrow is pretty much the big day um, for a lot of things. Schedules will be live in Hack. Um, and then the district will also be sending out important information about how to get logged in. There's gonna be a lot of things coming your way about how to get logged in. If you still have questions, like I said, please feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to get you an answer very quickly so that your child is ready to go on the first day of school. Alrighty, let's see. 
Alrighty, so you might be wondering about attendance. How is attendance taken? And so we're gonna talk about two different ways or two different things here. First, we're gonna talk about the first day of school. And the first day of school in Round Rock ISD is a very important day in regard to attendance and enrollment. So on the first day of school, um, your child will log in to their Schoology account. They will interact with their teacher and their teacher will give them an assignment. And now you might be thinking, what kind of assignment is my, is my child going to have on the first day of school? Um, I can guarantee you it's not going to be anything difficult. It might just be an interest survey of some sort, just a get to know you type activity. But that's to document that they were actually in, um, that they were engaged um, with that teacher that day. And so for that first day, we're calling it an assignment. That assignment will be um, pushed out to students and it will go through Schoology. And they do need to complete that assignment by 11.59 on Thursday night. So 11.59 is that end of day. And so that is our proof that the child was in attendance. What's very, very important, when I said that first day of school is very important for enrollment, um, in Round Rock ISD, as long as I've been in Round Rock ISD, if a student is not present on the first day of school, they end up being withdrawn. And then their schedule has to be recreated and it's a little bit more trouble than I know that you wanna go through. So um, please make sure that your child is aware of that assignment and that they do complete it so that they do not get withdrawn. Again, it's very important that they complete that and it will not be a difficult assignment. It'll be something that's um, pretty easy for them to do for that first day. All right. Okay, so that was the first day of school. Now you might also be wondering, well, what about during the school year? How is it that teachers take attendance? So there's two ways that students can be marked present throughout the school year in the virtual setting. So the first one is that the student um, logs in, they're synchronous with their uh, teacher. You know, Ms. Santos talked about all of those times that were synchronous, meaning that they were live with their teacher. So the teacher will be taking attendance in that session and they will document who was present. If a student was not able to log in for some reason, um, then the every teacher is gonna be pushing out assignments. The student needs to interact with that assignment and turn that in by 11.59 of that same day. As long as that assignment is turned in by 11.59 that day, they will be counted uh, present. So they're showing evidence of engagement in Schoology. Um, and they're turning in that assignment. All right. Alrighty, so um, if you are not new uh, to Hernandez Middle School, then you are very familiar um, with our HERO acronym. And so we are, you know, always encouraging students to uh, display these traits. And so we encourage it and we also celebrate it. So we try to find these traits in our students and celebrate those as well. Um, HERO, of course, um, stands for Honesty, Excellence, Respect, and Ownership. And you might be wondering, well, what does it mean to be a HERO? So honesty would be, you know, being true to your friends, being true to yourself, and then also being true uh, to your school. Um, moving on to excellence, we always ask our students to strive for excellence, and of course that affects uh, different areas. So giving your best to your friends and your peers, um, giving your best to your school, um, and also giving your best to yourself, because you do owe it to yourself to give yourself the best. All right, and of course, um, respect, always modeling respect. So showing um, and giving dignity to friends, uh, to yourself, and to your school. And of course, we always ask our students to take ownership. So taking pride um, in their friends, taking pride in themselves and the work that they do and in their actions, um, and also taking pride in their school. So we always ask everyone to take pride in their school and help out in any way that they can to make this a better place every single day. Alrighty, so like I mentioned, there are going to be lots of things coming your way about how to get, you know, logged in and that first day um, information. So the very first thing um, that you need to be aware of, there is going to be a virtual learning help desk that will be live tomorrow. Um, and we encourage you to not only follow our website for updates, but the district website as well. That is where they're going to have additional information for logging in. Um, and then, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but schedules will be live in Hack tomorrow. So the Home Access Center, um, that is when, tomorrow's when you can see your child's schedule. You should be able to also log into Schoology. 
And so those of you who are on district devices, um, class link was already pushed out to those devices. And so you should see that on your desktop, you click on that, log in using your username and password that you've been using as a student. Um, if you, and it'll take you to Schoology and you can look around, look to see, um, you know, what different teachers have in their Schoology accounts um, and in their courses, I should say. And then if you are um, not using a district device, it's okay. Um, there are going to be instructions on how you can access class link and Schoology. And so that will all be um, available on the 18th and the 19th. So again, on the 18th and the 19th, we encourage you to start looking around using those resources that are being sent out and start looking around, getting familiar with logging in, getting familiar with getting into Schoology um, and just kind of poking around so that it's not um, new on Thursday, the first day of school. All right, so let's see. We're going to be moving over to our Q&A session. I do want to just mention to you and just remind everybody that the first day of school is this Thursday and everybody is starting virtually. So, you know, everybody is logging in uh, remotely. Um, and then um, we will talk a little bit more about um, in-person instruction uh, once we get closer to that date. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ortiz. Dr. Eflin is having a little bit of a technical problem, and oh, Mr. No. Smosna, <laughs> if you are able to probably perhaps make her a panelist again. Until then, she asked me to uh, move us forward a little bit. So we're going to look at some of the questions and see if we can process some of those in the time that we have remaining. And then hopefully Dr. Eflin will be back to be able to give you her farewell wishes. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the questions came uh, early on about, do the kids have a C day this year? Uh, for those of you who may be new to the school, we typically ran for at least a couple, two or three years, an interesting schedule with Monday, Tuesday, and Friday being C days where they saw all eight classes and Wednesday and Thursday being block days where they were able to see um, periods one through four and then five through eight. Uh, right now in the virtual learning environment, the, there we, she is, uh, the, uh, students will just have a traditional A day, B day, block day. That will probably continue when the time comes for face-to-face -face learning as well. Uh, we will kind of have to see how the year progresses in terms of whether we go back to the schedule that we've been doing. But the, for the time being, you can anticipate an A day, block day rotation, which as Mr. As Ms. Santos may mention, you kind of have to keep track because Monday's not always an A day. And for those of us who've had high school students go through high school, uh, you've always had a student go, oh, dad, I brought my B backpack and it was an A day. So given that they're at home right now, that won't be quite the uh, difficulty, but it is going to be a little bit of a transition. So from A to B. So Dr. Evelyn, I see Mr. Smosley got you back in. You want to take over with the questions and answers that are in the uh, Q&A section? Sure, yes. So some questions that actually came through the chat were, is there still going to be athletics? So as of right now, students will still be taking that athletics period. The coaches will have workouts for your students to do and some other assignments. Um, as of right now, students will not be participating in um, sports until we actually come back face to face. So once we come back face to face, then sports will begin again. And so be looking out for those emails from your coaches because they will let you know when practices start. As of right now, um, we are scheduling practices for before and after school once we are um, going to have students face to face. So there will, during the athletic period, your child will have assignments to do from their coaches, but practices once we're back in the building face to face will occur before and after school. Even if your student is virtual, if you've chosen that route for your students, they are still allowed to participate in athletics. Um, they just need to attend practice, which again would be before or after school. Schedules will not be sent to parents. Schedules are in Hack. So all you have to do is log into Hack and they will be, it will be available tomorrow. Log into Hack and you'll be able to see your students' schedules. How were the schedules assigned? 
electives. The electives were the electives your students chose. So your students chose um, one, two, and three um, based on their preference. And we do really try to give students their first choice for electives and second choice. Sometimes we do have to move to the third choice, but um, we do really try to give students their first and second choice. What is the procedure for reporting an excused absence? The same way we've always done it. You will need to uh, let our, our attendance clerk, I'm sorry, Ms. Denoso know. Um, she will have a link on our website for you to click for easy access so that you can submit your doctor's note because those are excused absences. And if your child was sick at home, um, you'll be able to submit an email for that. Will there be tryouts for volleyball and football? Yes, there will be. Um, I know our coaches are uh, really wanting to get our athletics going, but yes, there will be tryouts uh, for volleyball and football. Um, how do we request a schedule change? So schedule changes, we do ask that those not be made within the first two weeks of school. And that's really for a variety of reasons um, for um, the district, for our campus, for students registering. But we will be able to take schedule changes after the first two weeks of school. We will send a form, it'll be on our website, and we'll send an email to students as well. Um, just like we did last year, letting them know that um, it's time if they want to uh, ask for a schedule change. Schedule changes are then completed and sent to their assistant principal. Um, their assistant principal will receive that schedule change, go over with the student, so they may schedule a Google Meet Hangout with the students and then with the counselor to go over the reason why the schedule change um, wants to occur. Um, there are times when we're not, when we cannot accommodate a schedule change. For instance, if a student wants to get out of theater and wants to be in art, um, sometimes classes are too full. So there just isn't a way to get a student into an art class if it's too full. So there are times when um, a class is full and a student cannot, we cannot accommodate the student into that classroom. My sons will be learning online or participate in athletics on campus. How will this be handled? You'll just attend practice. Um, just like I said, practices are, will be held before and after school once we're allowed to come back face to face. So um, your child will attend practice if it's scheduled before school or if it's scheduled after school, depending on the grade and depending on the sport. And so that'll be taken care of that way. So be on the lookout on our website and also communication from the coaches regarding tryouts and also regarding time of practice. Okay, let me go to, that was in the chat. Let me go to the Q&A. Is there still going to be athletics? Yes. Will there still be banned? Yes, there still will be banned. Right now, virtually, of course, you'll do the activities and things virtually. Um, our band instructors, uh, directors will be sending out emails for those students who need things such as reeds or equipment, oil. Uh, they will be sending emails out to y'all so that they will have a pickup time for you to pick up those things if you need it. Um, also, if you do need a band instrument, they will send out your e an email for that. But yes, there is band. Um, when were the electives chosen? So the electives were chosen last school year. Um, we always make, the students always choose their electives at the end of school last year. Um, and so those schedules for seventh graders were done, well, not even for sixth graders and eighth graders, they were all done at the end of last year. Um, okay, that's everything in the Q&A. Let me just check the chat one more time. For online school, is there Zoom or no? There's actually no Zoom. What we are using is called Schoology. And within Schoology, there is a tool called the Big Blue Button. And so the big blue button, and we just found out today, actually um, people on this call don't even know about it because it's just so new, that we have purchased all of the bells and whistles for the big blue button. So our teachers will be able to use groups and add more than 25 students with the free version of the big blue button. You can only have 25 students in groupings, but we, the district has purchased the um, all enhanced version 
So teachers will be able to use the big blue button um, with all the bells and whistles. So they will either be using the big blue button or they will be using Google Meets. Um, when will students, when will students be able to go back to a live environment? Well, as of right now, that date is September 10th. And of course, you know, as well as I do, things change um, every day in my world, um, every week, every other week, um, minute by minute. So as of right now, we are scheduled to go back in person on September 10th if you have chosen that um, mode of instruction. So you all received the instructional um, choice form. And on that instructional choice form, you made a choice to either come back to campus face to face, or you made a choice to come to receive instruction virtually. So it's it's important that um, you let us know if you, you know, which choice you chose so that we can make preparations for that. Um, we will have an additional meeting for those parents who chose face-to-face -face instruction because this meeting is about virtual instruction because all of our students are engaged in virtual instruction for the first three weeks. And we will have another virtual meeting just like this one week prior to face-to-face -face instruction to go over all of the specifics of face-to-face -face instruction because we will talk about safety, we will talk about um, cleaning, we will talk about PPE, um, personal protective equipment, we'll talk about face masks, we'll talk about all those things at um, a virtual meeting one week prior to um, virtual instruction. Can you convince my mom to let me go to school? Well, I don't know if I can convince, can convince your mom to let you go to school, but we really do want to see all of our kiddos. My son is new to the district. Will he be able to pick his electives? Yes, he will. So once we go through the registration process with you, our registrar will be reaching out to you and then our counselors will <clears throat> excuse me, so that we can um, talk with your child about what electives they would like. Okay. Um, do we all need to install the Schoology host or is it all web-based? It is all web-based. We will have something called Class Link and Class Link will be a one-stop shop for all of the um, links to any type of, I don't even know the right word, Mr. Smazna can really help me out, um, to all the applications that we're asking students to log into. And that is why um, ClassLink is a really nice feature because a student can just go to that one spot and then they will have access to all of those applications. Um, and it also, if I'm understanding correctly, saves all of their passwords for them. So once they log into Class Link, which is password protected, then they have access to all of their apps and all of their passwords are in there. So it's all in one place for the students. Um, do students take face masks and hand sanitizer? Students will have to wear face masks at school when they come face to face. Yes, they do. We will have, they can take hand sanitizer if they want, but the school is equipped with hand sanitizer stations all throughout the school. Can you please discuss what HACK is? You're not sure. Okay, HACK is our home access center. And our home access center is where parents go to look at grades for their students. And so Home Access Center and Report Cards is where Home Access Center also houses those things. Um, so Home Access Center is where you will go to see your students' schedule. Um, students also have access to Home Access Center. Um, so uh, students can see their schedules as well. Home Access Center will go live for students and parents with current schedules tomorrow. So students will be able to see their schedule tomorrow um, starting, I think they said 6 a.m., but um, you can start, I would start looking at 8. But they did say at 6 a.m. that Home Access Center would be live with student schedules in it. Will students have to show their faces, and if so, will they see all the other students' faces during instructional teaching? Concern for overstimulation and distraction. So if a teacher uses, chooses to use Big Blue Button, 
um, then no, students will not see other people's faces. And no, they don't have to show their faces. Um, I think teachers would like to see student faces, but it's not required. Um, so they don't have to see that. Um, just like I'm doing right now, like I can do like a stop video and then you don't see my face anymore, but you can certainly hear me. So we do ask that students participate, but they don't necessarily have to show their face. Um, also, um, with Big Blue Button, there is a feature where you don't have to see anybody else's faces, although students do like to feel like a classroom setting where they can see others. So um, it's a setting that teachers can put on specific students. It can be a setting that teachers use for their whole classroom. So um, if you as a parent don't want your students to see other people, you can certainly reach out to the teacher and let them know that and they can put that setting on your child in particular. Um, how will we find out our classes? You'll find your classes out on Home Access Center. Will we be able to continue virtual learning once school opens back up? Yes, you are. You, uh, virtual learning will still be um, available for all of you, for all parents and for all students once we open up face-to-face. -face. Yes. Will class link be pushed out to the devices that are already at home? Yes, and they should actually already be there. Once you log on to your device, um, you will be able to see class link and it should be on your um, desktop homepage. Okay, so if you need to get a device, all you have to do is go to uh, Mr. Smazna, if you'll show us that link again. All you have to do is go to the Hernandez webpage and on the front page of our webpage, there is a man um, uh, with a blue shirt on a computer. Click on that link, which says updated COVID-19 technology support. Once you click on that link, you will be, uh, you will look at this blue uh, little calendar here and um, you can see at the very bottom of each day, it says still need a device for virtual learning, click here. Simply click there and you will alert us so that we will know that you need a device. Mr. Smazna will get that device ready and you'll be able to pick it up. Um, we do have pickup times tomorrow uh, Mr. Smazna, do you want to let them know the times? Yes, the times tomorrow for pickup are 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the middle of the day. And for those of you that can't make it in the middle of the day in the evening from 5 to 7 p.m. Okay, and we have time for maybe one more question. Question. Somebody asked, do hotspot support multiple devices or just one? Hotspots support multiple devices. So if you have a hotspot, you can support multiple devices in your home. Um, will there be, uh, let me take one more. Will there be any more, any books assigned to the children or will, will it all be web-based? The books, everything will be web-based. However, if your student has an IEP or a 504 that requires them to have a textbook, we will certainly check those textbooks out um, on an as-needed basis. All right, so that is all. I will put out one more plug. If you have any questions about registration, if you have any questions about Home Access Center, if you have any questions about knowing whether or not your child is enrolled at school, have a hard time getting into the Home Access Center, have a difficult time um, getting your schedule once, uh, once it opens tomorrow, please reach out to the school. The numbers are on our website. You can either call our attendance clerk, uh, Ms. Donoso, you can call our registrar, Ms. Gamas, or you can call um, our assistant principal secretary, Ms. Aguilera, and they can help you. We are here to help and support you. That is what we're here for, and we know that this is a different time. It's different than just walking up and getting your questions answered face-to-face, uh, -face, but we are here to help and support you, so please reach out either by phone or email, and we are here to help you, um, so please reach out. 
we are, I am super excited about this school year too. And I can't wait to see all of your students in classrooms. We can also pop in to their virtual settings. So we will be doing that once school starts. So I can't wait to see all of your kiddos again. I'm super excited for this school year and can't wait for it to start. Please reach any and all questions. Um, we're here to help you. But thank you all again for joining us this evening. And I am just so excited and happy. And I know my team is as well that's on this call to get this school year started. And thank you again for coming out. Um, once again, this is being recorded and will be on our website so that um, for anybody who didn't get to see it, um, if anybody has any questions or missed part of it, it will be up tomorrow so that you can go back and see the recorded version. But thanks again and have a great evening. Good night.